All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome to a game between Infi versus Lucifer taking place here on Terranus Stan. On the top left-hand side of the map, we have Lucifer spawning as the Red Undead. Meanwhile, Infi has spawned as I, what I believe to be the Blue Night Elf over here on the bottom right. Terranus Stan, Lucifer is green on the map up here, even though he is red in the game. Meanwhile, well, you can take a look here for everyone else. <coughs> Excuse me, Infi is, well, red, even though he is blue in game. So don't ask me how all of that works out. I really don't know. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the game here and what we're going to expect to see from this Night Elf vs. Undead matchup. Keeper of the Grove, generally not um, used all that much in this matchup, as you only end up exchanging um, mana from the Keeper of the Grove for mana from the Death Knight. The Death Knight, with that 200 hit point heal, is able to keep those early yeah, ghouls yeah, alive yeah. um alive and by doing so well what ends up happening is that um, the ghouls are not very good targets because they're only two supply it's not really worth it and then by the time you are getting into a large number of crypt fiends getting to 200 to 400 hit point heals is really heavily in favor of the keeper of the grove now I am expecting the Keeper of the Grove to go for Ents here and try to use Archers to clear out of this creep camp. This level 5 two, 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 two creep camp should get cleared out in, in no time flat and give level 2 to that Keeper of the Grove. Entangle will be that follow up ability once more as things are already getting underway. Let's take a look back off to the north. We are going for a Dreadlord? Alright, okay, I take it all back. Um, Dreadlord first coming in from Lucifer. All of my theory crafting is out the window. And then once again, this game was a recommended game. So no surprise that this is not your standard game at all. All right, Forest Troll is going to get taken out in pretty much no time flat. However, that Ancient of War is suffering a bit of damage. Is it going to get taken out as well? No, it is not. It's going to end up staying, being able to survive just a little while longer as the Forest Troll will now get taken down here. The Sasquatch, the last to get killed, but because it has the most hit points and its damage is a, well, pretty much not in line with how much damage you need it in order to take out the Sasquatch, that's why it is that final unit there. Keeper of the Grove will be able to get to level 2 right here. One more shot, there it goes, picks up a Tome of Strength, picks up Sentry Wards as the Keeper of the Grove most likely gets entangled. Dreadlord now makes its way over. Is it going to go ahead and sleep? That Forge Troll High Priest puts down Blight with the use of a Sacrificial Skull and now also placing down a Ziggurat. Nicely done there. For a moment, the Wisp was considering trying to do a detonation, but that Ziggurat in the end would just end up uh, replacing all of that Blight anyways, making it not very worth it. Meanwhile, Skeletal Minions have been summoned up as well. We are haunting a gold mine as Lucifer goes for an expansion. All right. In what well, games past, many, many undead players did not go for expansions because it was rather risky as we are now going to be looking at Infi going for an expansion as well. All right, let's take a look at the follow-up play here. Force of Nature's are going to be dealing a little bit of damage. Tree of Life is nearby, and it will be doing an expo game. This is going to turn into a longer game than normal, or, well, a double expansion game on both sides. And how is this going to really play out? I do not know. Those Forest Troll Berserkers should get taken out by those Trents in no time flat. We are haunting this gold mine here. We are not taking the Tier 2 as the Necropolis needs to train up some additional Acolytes in order to get into this position here and start mining that out. I am surprised. Oh, there's two more Acolytes. One more should be on the way as we have a Tome of Agility being left behind. Coming back on the other side, we are still at Tree of Life by Infi as well, as the Keeper of the Grove is now going to teleport to the other side of the map. Puts down a Sentry Ward, is going to be able to get an Entangle off on an... Al no, goes for Forces of Nature, goes for an Entangle, and now may be able to finish off these Acolytes here. This could potentially be very bad, but what is this? Flip side, and now the Keeper of the Grove is going to end up being surrounded, forcing itself to use a scroll of Town Portal in order to get away 
as the Keeper of the Grove runs back home. Staff of Teleportation here ready to go. Keeper of the Grove now heading back off to the north. Does have Boots of Speed. Should be able to get into a good position there. Meanwhile, the Acolytes are already haunting this gold mine. And meanwhile, this Necropolis here should be transferring some more Acolytes as well. All right, Ghoul now making its way back down to the south here as we have Infi doing a good job just trying to clear up creep camps. Unfortunately, Lightning Shield taking down some of those, um, well, some of those creeps here, denying that experience as double Lightning Shield. Well, very difficult to maneuver around as well, all of your stationary units end up dealing damage to each other on accident. Apprentice Wizards will get taken out. The Sentry Ward off to the north in a good spot. Necropolis, five Acolytes already mining this gold mine here. It's going to be a little bit of time before this gold mine has finished um, being entangled and the economic advantage will be neutralized. We are looking at Vampiric Aura from the Dreadlord. So it is Sleep and Vampiric Aura. And this is indeed very interesting. Vampiric Aura level one as the Dreadlord has level two sleep. Now, Carry On Swarm is not is actually a very useful ability. I'm quite surprised that we're not taking a look at this here in this matchup as the remaining units will get finished off. Back down to the south, Keeper of the Grove with a mass archer army on the move here, ready to go. Meanwhile, the Dreadlord is going to make its way over. It has double claws of attack plus six. And all of these items would make me believe a Pit Lord as a follow-up hero could be extremely useful as well. Sentry Ward quickly being placed down though. However, it is revealed there is a, a sleep followed by an entangle. Who is going to win out on this war here as a scroll of town portal quickly being used. Units are all trying to dance every which way. One ghoul gets taken down, one archer taken down as well. Keeper of the Grove using that scroll of the beast, all of that additional bonus damage. And pretty much the Dreadlord says, you know what? I do not want to stick around for that. The Dreadlord now makes its way to the south. Will it be able to perhaps shut down or at least catch some of his opponents while they're or some of the opponent units while they're creeping? No, that doesn't seem to be the case. Keeper of the Grove, however, going to hold steady at level four as we are finally getting into tier two and now on our way to tier three with dual Ancients of Wind being added. Ancients of Wind generally indicates that we should be going into Hippogriffs. Druids of the Talent are not used all that often, but Book of the Dead quickly being used here. All right, there is a sleep onto the Keeper of the Grove. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove needs to get away. How, how is all of this going to really work out here as the Keeper of the Grove has been able to scare away the Dreadlord? Skeletal Minions now trying to pick off perhaps a handful of units. Does get one Archer right there. Is he going to be able to pick off another Archer or two? That is the question. Yes, able to pick off another Archer there as the Forest Troll Shadow Priest ends up staying alive. Back down in the south, more archers look like they're still being trained. Ancients of Wind looking to train up Hippogriffs as the Keeper of the Grove calls in even more Ents. Overall supply count 37 compared to 47 right now as the Keeper of the Grove now heads back. What is the long-term strategy? Still I, difficult to make predictions as we're looking at a Slaughterhouse and a Tech to Tier 3. We don't see a second hero being trained up by the undead. So it could be just trying to get that Dreadlord to level 6 and summoning the Infernal. The Infernal summon is in a very, very powerful ability. Ghouls will be forced to retreat here. They're taking a lot of damage. However, the Dreadlord does have level 2 Vampiric Aura, I believe. Yes, so it is going to be a 20% heal as the Dreadlord now looks looking to finish off this last Kobold Geomancer. All right, going to go ahead and just try and surround this Kobold Taskmaster right here. There it goes. And a little bit of damage regeneration as you can take a look, uh, a, a little bit of a heal per swipe as the Force of Nature is now joining in on the fight. All right, Keeper of the Grove gets in, well, gets slept right there. Meanwhile, Ents are going to get taken down, a handful of them, but that army of six Ents, so powerful, not enough mana on that Forest Troll Shadow Priest as some of them may end up getting taken down. All right, Ghouls trying to close in on that distance. Low hit point end, attempting to back away and will be able to back away just enough as the Keeper of the Grove has been picking off Ghouls fairly easily. One more shot could have done it. Wow, beautiful micro by Infi. 
to save every single one of those low hit point ends and pull them out of the battle. All right, all of these low hit point ends, what are they going to do? They're going to try to throw themselves onto a couple of those towers. Going to go after the lower hit point um, buildings first and see exactly that's happening right there as the ends now make their way over to try and take down this gold mine. Dreadlord is going to really benefit excuse me the gargoyles are going to really benefit from the vampiric aura as well since they do technically deal melee damage if there are going to be hippogriffs in the air which there currently are all right keeper of the grove staff of teleportation teleports all over here to the top right ignores a tome of agility and it looks as though it is going to make its way across the map um, again four ents already here ready to go is he perhaps trying to wait for another batch of ents get using that clarity potion a bit more effectively as the units are now going to roll on out dreadlord sitting at level four gargoyles are in the air meanwhile you have hippogriff riders here ready to go and they're going to be diving straight up on this haunted gold mine here a little bit of a split prong attack the keeper of the grove with an eight tree army able to deal tremendous damage as the keeper of the grove currently now asleep Trying to get back into the spot here. Acolyte not getting taken down. Meanwhile, back off to the north. Gargoyles trying to go after some of these hippogriffs. And it looks as though some of those hippogriffs will end up getting taken down. Ghouls now being called over to finish off the archers. As the gargoyles are going to overrun all of the hippogriffs in the air. Keeper of the Grove gets to level 6. But what is it really going to be able to do at this point? As the ar archers are getting taken down one at a time. More Ents now joining in on the fight. Another archer getting taken out here. As the hippogriffs... All right, well, Hippogriffs and Archers now trying to battle it up. A gargoyle is now tr heading back across here. They could go back into stone form mode and be able to heal up. Meanwhile, the Dreadlord is going to be joining in on the fight. There's a quick sleep onto the Keeper of the Grove. He has no more mana. Nothing. Well, a, a little tap should wake him up. But no one is currently even bothering with the Keeper of the Grove. He is out of that fight. Another sleep now being used. Gargoyle is looking to finish off the remaining ends here. There goes another Dreadlord up to level 6. So level 6, a Dreadlord already being used or already in play. And we could have Summon Infernal, a very powerful ability as the Panda now joins in on the fight to try and counteract those Gargoyles, which do tend to clump together. Panda going after the well the apprentice and rogue wizards here claws of attack plus six could get picked up panda does not well gargoyle is not really even going after this here hippogriffs are here ready to go what is going to be going on as the hippogriffs are still joining up in the air meanwhile gargoyles are trying to dive down onto this location here we see orb of venom a gargoyle taking a lot of damage there's an entangle onto the dreadlord dreadlord to try and finish off some of this here as we take a look more gargoyles getting added into this position obsidian statue now joins in on the fight that's going to be more than enough hippogriffs now being called back there is a summon the infernal it is going to be dealing damage just standing next to it beautifully done right there as claws of attack now being left behind the infernal still looking to perhaps fight back in this position but what is going on infernal looking to finish off the gargoyle or finish off this one tree of life here tranquility now being used and the dreadlord without mana is not going to be able to do all too much until he i believe he used a potion of mana no he had enough mana to try and sleep off that keeper of the grove after the invulnerability was done drunken haze breath of fire gargoyle taking a lot of damage are we going to see the scroll of healing used yes it is as the gargoyles are still trying to fight back here obsidian statue in the back deal me field meanwhile dreadlord is still fighting this up here that infernal just standing next to it is doing a lot of damage with both sides taking a lot of losses staff of preservation gargoyles are here the infernal if it just perhaps tries to stand next to those wisp will be able to take some of them down all right destroyer now up in the air absorbing mana now gonna go ahead and try and engage able to deal a lot of damage to those wisp wisp getting taken out left and right as the keeper of the grove unable to stop this dreadlord and his level two vampire aura i don't know if carry on swarm is coming all right tree of life will get taken out and it looks as though it is going to be two bases to two remember back over here to the top right infi has set up an additional base infi's infernal down to what a thousand hit points still has a good amount of um good amount of hit points here as you can see 
Um, well, the vampiric aura is definitely helping it out, allowing it to stay around for quite a bit of time as the gargoyles look to finish off some of these ground units here. Now, one key thing to note, the Dreadlord is not gaining any experience whatsoever as the Dreadlord rotates back off to the north. Why would the Dreadlord even want to be creeping? It still drops items, it still drops gold, and that's exactly what you're looking for at this stage in the game. Those powerful consumable items, Potion of Greater Mana being one of those items, uh, to allow yourself to, well, um, use that Potion of Greater Mana, summon an another Infernal, perhaps get more sleeps, or at some point, carry on swarm might become spammable if we see a level 8 or even a level 9 dreadlord keeper of the grove sitting at level 6 panda sitting at level 3 already level 3 panda level level 2 breath of fire plus level 1 drunken haze could shut down this gargoyle army before it really even gets off the ground meanwhile uh, let's take a look at this here gargoyles are showing up to the party a lot of trees acolytes could end up getting taken down lucifer may end up l losing a bit of this expansion here as the acolytes gonna get strangled to death by those uh, well, those entangling roots meanwhile back off to the north here keeper of the grove has already backed up does have a sobi mask and a wand of um or a staff of teleportation and a wand and a staff of preservation to try and heal all of those units up and get out of bad spots now lucifer is sitting at 69 over 70 supply compared to 57 over 60. The Dreadlord is now accompanied by the Death Knight. Death Knight is only at level 1, but even at level 1, um, Death Coils could in fact deal a lot of damage. Here you go there, summoning the Infernal amongst all of those units now. Destroyers are showing up to the party. They're trying to focus down some of those Gargoyles here, but that Gargoyle simply will not fall in time. Meanwhile, coming back the other side, the Ents are going to be able to put pressure on all of these Acolytes once more. Squirrel Town Portal being used. There you go. There's the engagement. What is happening? Sleep onto the Panda. The Panda is currently asleep. Going to go ahead and pry Drunken Haze Breath of Fire. No, does get another sleep as the Hippogriffs and the and the well the gargoyles are battling it out so far though the dreadlord is still in this fight here death coil tries to save one of those gargoyles and will it last long enough keeper of the grove gets to level seven panda gets to level four and a beautiful beautiful um, teleportation allowed all of those gargoyles to instantly pretty much be taken out one obsidian statue now still trying to get away keeper of the grove the way said dreadlord is still right here is going to be able to escape down to 46 hit points there is another sleep keeper of the grove now taken out and with that said and done well the death knight gets up to level three but more importantly losing such a high powerful unit obsidian statue is it going to perhaps get breath of fire it, all it needs to do is breath of fire it can actually blow over this obsidian statue not quite sure why it didn't do it earlier um gets taken out in the process as the death coil from the death knight deals enough damage keeper of the grove resurrected sitting at level seven expansion over here to the top right may end up getting taken down and with this it is going to end up being one base uh, one base to two lucifer at no upkeep right now sitting at 44 supply as the infernal or as the infernal will perhaps be able to take down this tree of life dreadlord sitting at level seven let's see what's going to happen up next obsidian statue dangerously low on on hit points unholy aura does give a little bit of passive regeneration to that obsidian statue but not enough to get it back up to full or out of at least the red zone for quite a bit of time dreadlord now at level eight and wow, Dreadlord at level 8 using Gargoyles, Infernals, and a Death Knight to try and keep the pressure on. Infi has an army of upgraded 2-2 Hippogriffs. Panda is getting resurrected. And as long as the Panda is able to stay alive, that Drunken Haze and Breath of Fire combination might be enough. However, if he does not get those um, abilities off, the Gargoyles versus all of the hippogriffs even with tranquility backing it up for some point is going to end up falling because of the vampiric aura of the dreadlord vampiric aura of the dreadlord 30 percent of that damage getting healed back up so um, what is that upwards of 27 damage per attack is getting healed um probably somewhere closer into the 24 range but even then 
24 um, in, in that range. That is just still dealing a large, massive amount of damage. All right, Obsidian Statues back across over here. Are the Hippogriffs doing very much? No, we don't see anything really going on there. Meanwhile, Death Knight, Dreadlord, wandering around. Infernal, it gets summoned straight up onto multiple units. Death Knight could be in trouble. Scroll of Town Portal, Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, not very worth it at all as the Death Knight is able to escape. Death Knight escapes all the way back home. Are we perhaps going to see a little bit more healing? I don't see any additional obsidian statues out. Nope, there's one obsidian statue there. And we should be looking at more healing getting underway here in just a moment. All right, Infernal attempting to heal back the Dreadlord and that Death Knight also needs to heal up some of its own hit points as well as that will be pretty slow going. 59 supply compared to 58. We are somehow back to neck and neck in terms of the overall economic race. Let's take a look. Keeper of the Grove at 7. Panda is at 4 compared to, I believe, a 6-3 or an 8-3. So an 8-3 um, compared to a 7-4. Overall hero levels are pretty much about the same as the Obsidian Statue is getting this army back up and ready to go. 3-0 upgrades on all of those gargoyles. I don't see any additional upgrades underway at underway at the graveyard 60 supply compared to 65 infi needs to figure out what he's doing with these hippogriffs and it's here ready to go hippogriff riders 1-0 ready to go as well looking to do a lot of damage these hippogriffs um unarmored versus lightly armored depending on if they are hippogriff rider or a hippogriff as the units are now getting in off to the north still no expansion coming in at all and that could be the big issue now as Infi doesn't know um, how to stop his opponent from maintaining that economic advantage his opponent Lucifer um, should have a larger army also has more gold coming in as the Hippogriff should be turning back around here we go what is happening next? Dreadlord now trying to run back. There is that damage. One Inferno should be getting into position. Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire across multiple units. Uh, multiple Gargoyles could end up getting taken down. No easy way to finish off all these units here as the Keeper of the Grove comes across with Tranquility. However, they are now chasing a little bit too far as um, unit after unit is now away from all of that Tranquility. Now the Tranquility back down across over here. Meanwhile, all of these... Hippogriffs are not regenerating hit points as well. There goes a destroyer. 50 supply compared to 38. Lucifer is in a bit of trouble. Death Knight, what is going to be going on here? Is he going to be able to get away? Death Knight down to 7, 29 hit points. One more shot should do it. It is somehow, however, staying alive as the, uh, the Goblin Shredder joins in and finishes off the Death Knight. Infernal is right here. Are we going to perhaps see? Yes, Death of the Panda as the Keeper of the Grove is still asleep now. All right, joining back in again. Keeper of the Grove now trying to get away. Gargoyles is right here. Keeper of the Grove able to finish off that Infernal now as the Keeper of the Grove sits at level 7 going to Staff of Teleportation away. And now Infi has the supply advantage. All right, Lucifer has, has more gold, but at the same time, um, Lucifer also has a smaller army at this point. Panda is looking to get resurrected. Just now getting started as the Tree of Eternity is going to root itself and it will soon be one base versus one base, assuming Infi can hold on to this center, um, center gold mine. Dreadlord now making its way back down to the south. Tranquility being used once again, keeping all of these hippogriffs alive. As I've said before in the past, one of the biggest reasons why the Keeper of the Grove is so strong is that his ability is just as useful in um, out of combat as it is in combat. All right, Hippogriffs going straight after that one Obsidian Statue. Going to go ahead and get it taken down. Keeper of the Grove now needing, being forced to pull back here. Dreadlord gets entangled as the... Infernal is chasing after that Keeper of the Grove. Meanwhile, Hippogriff Riders chasing after some of those extra units here as they're going to take a look at this Infernal just running around in circles attempting to go after this Keeper of the Grove. All right, and slowly going to get taken out. There is another Entangle onto the Dreadlord. Dreadlord could have a little bit of trouble repositioning the trees to make it so that the Dreadlord cannot get out of that spot very easily. Could end up getting taken down, and it does in fact fall. All right. With that, Lucifer has left the game and Infi takes the win. 
All right, that game went back and forth. Economics having to, well, make play a major advantage, but in the end, Infi was still able to win and come out on top. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.